Okay, so you figured it out. You have a damaged moisture barrier, and it seems like the hard work is behind you because just figuring out that diagnosis seemed pretty complicated, right? And now it's time to build a routine to heal your skin. But it's not as simple as that, is it? There's a whole confusing world out there of products that can possibly help you heal your moisture barrier. And I know how confusing it is because I've done it. I have had a damaged moisture barrier and I've actually been able to heal it. So give this video a big thumbs up because today I'm gonna to share with you the products that I personally use to heal my moisture barrier, but not only that, I'm gonna teach you the ingredients you wanna look for in products that are going to really help to feed and heal your moisture barrier. Plus I'm gonna teach you how to put all of these products into a really effective routine. Because the thing is you 100% can do this. You can heal your moisture barrier, but it just takes a little patience, the right mix of products, and a little bit of knowledge. So I gathered all of the products and I actually kind of built them into a little bit of a routine for you. Now the routine that I built is really a routine that I would do myself. Now I do follow a seven to eight step routine and that may not be right for everybody, just a disclaimer here. So even though I have built this into a routine, don't feel any pressure to have all of these steps in your routine if your skin does better with less products. I am going to highlight the ones that I think are like vital to the process of healing your moisture barrier. So don't worry, I am going to highlight the ones that I think you can't live without. But just so you know, this one is going to be a little bit more individually based and you just pick and choose what works for you. So first things first is cleansers. Now this is 100% non-negotiable. It has got to be a low pH cleanser. Now here's the thing about low pH in case you're just like, what the heck? I don't understand why I need that. Low pH is important for all skin types and all skin conditions because you want to maintain your skin's natural pH level. When you start to raise the pH level of your skin past the normal 5.5 range, you start to open yourself up to irritants and bacteria. And this is on normal skin, but because you have a damaged moisture barrier, you have to remember your barrier is not protecting you from those things even at the regular pH level. So when you're starting to raise your pH level and kind of raise the, the acid mantle on your skin, you're actually going to open yourself up to even further damage and further irritation, which is absolutely not what we want to do. Cleansing can actually be a very stripping process. So number one, your cleanser has got to be low pH. Number two, it has to be free of any other possible irritants. Now, some of the most popular low pH cleansers like Cosrx Low pH Good Morning Cleanser actually contains tea tree. Generally speaking, tea tree is a great ingredient, gentle and effective for acne, but, but your skin is vulnerable. It is in a damaged state and we cannot we cannot include any possible irritants in a skincare routine. And that's why I actually recommend the Make Preem Save Me Relief Moisture Cleansing Foam. This is low pH, it uh, tests at 5.5, which is that perfect level, but this doesn't contain any essential oils, it contains no stripping or astringent ingredients, and there's no tea tree oil in here. This is just a very thick foaming cleanser that is very gentle on the skin. It's going to maintain the little bit of moisture that you have on your skin. Now, masking can be a really great option for you guys when you are dealing with a damaged moisture barrier. And I really do prefer wash off masks when my skin is in a damaged state rather than sheet masks. Now, sheet masks are great. Do not get me wrong on that. But the general behavior behind sheet masks is we're using different ones every night, right? Different brands, different, um, with different benefits to them, different ingredients. And because sheet masks can really penetrate deeply into the skin, some of those ingredients could be possible irritants. And it's not always a good idea to introduce so many like new ingredients or different ingredients in your skincare routine. So I actually like to lean on wash off masks instead. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. First off, you know, moisturizing, I'm talking about moisturizing wash off masks. I'm not talking about like poor cleaning wash off masks, no clay masks, please. I'm talking about masks like the I'm from Honey Mask. This is incredibly moisturizing to the skin. It has hydrating properties and it's very soothing and calming because honey is just generally a very soothing and calming ingredient. These are the kinds of masks I'm talking about. Now these masks are great because they infuse your skin with a lot of moisture and they can actually help to calm down irritation. Now the thing is you're really 
struggling with your moisture levels to begin with. When your moisture barrier is damaged, you're just constantly losing moisture and hydration out of your skin. And really the goal is to maintain as much moisture as you heal, right? So a wash off mask can be a great kind of like foundational start to your skincare routine to kind of just give you a moisture boost. But beyond that, I actually like to use them for a little bit of a trick because the thing is when your skin is vulnerable, hot water is actually very damaging to your skin. It is actually just very stripping to your skin even in a normal state, hot water is not good for your skin, but when your moisture barrier is damaged, we really want to avoid hot water because it can easily zap all the moisture out of your skin quickly. So you always want to wash your skin with room temperature water um, if possible, even cold water is great. But what about the shower? What about the bath, right? Because even though it would be easy for me to say take a cold shower and then move on to the next portion of this video, but nobody wants to take a cold shower, at least I don't. So I do, as much as you can lower the temperature, definitely do that. But what I do like to do is use wash off masks. Now, I actually leaned on this one quite a bit during my moisture barrier issues. And what I would do is put this on before I got into the shower, get into the shower, wash up, shave, wash your hair, and then don't try as much as possible to not get water on your face. Then when you're about to get out of the shower, rinse your face off with water. It's going to protect your skin. It's going to create a protective barrier that's going to prevent the moisture from um, coming out of your skin. So I actually highly recommend this mask as a possible option for that. But I recently discovered a product that actually has this trick in mind. And that's the Make Prem Wonderful Me In Shower Face Pack. This functions exactly the same way. This is infuses your skin with moisture, but because it is actually made for the shower, a couple of things. You can keep it in your shower because of the bottom right this is waterproof but because it's made for being used in the shower it's going to cling to your skin just a little bit better than the honey mask although if you have something like this on hand this works just fine as well Okay, warning, this is one of the steps that I think is completely essential to moisture barrier repair, and I'm talking about toners. Now this is really important because my philosophy for healing your moisture barrier comes down to two steps. It's about adding all of that hydration and moisture back into your skin. So first step is to just kind of really quench your skin, right? You wanna layer back in all of that water and moisture because your barrier is not working properly. When your barrier is working properly, it works to hold all the good stuff into your skin skin and keep all the bad stuff out of your skin. But the easiest way to remember it and to think about it is the fact that if your moisture barrier is damaged, you want to think about it as having holes. Instead of being a, a complete barrier, we've got holes now. And that's where all the good stuff that's being held into your skin can actually escape through. Um, and this is something that we really need to battle against. This is something called transepidermal water loss. It's normal for it to happen in, you know, in day-to-day -day life, but it is completely like accelerated and very extreme with damaged moisture barriers. And this is the number one thing that we want to protect our skin against because the more moisture we lose, the more irritated our skin becomes, the more um, dull our skin becomes, the more acne we start to get, the more irritation breakouts we start to get. So we really want to guard against this. So first step is to add in a lot of hydration and then the second step is to seal that hydration in. So foundational steps are definitely going to be toners because they can penetrate deeply into the skin to hydrate them. A lot of them have a really good mix between water and um, oil or, or moisture, which is exactly what our skin needs. We need to get our skin back in balance. The second reason why I really like toners as a foundational step is because you can just keep layering them on until your skin feels comfortable. Don't feel limited to doing like one layer of toners. If your skin is really dry, if it's feeling really tight and uncomfortable, keep layering up your toners until your skin feels comfortable. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. So let me spotlight two toners that I think really kind of go the extra mile. Now, if you've got a hydrating routine, uh, a hydrating toner in your routine already with no astringent properties, no drying alcohols, then I would say just use that because there's no need to go out and get anything extra. But if you are looking to add a toner into your routine, let me just spotlight two that I think are exceptional. Number one is the ENS Jinjung Sun Soothing Moisture Skin Essence. Now this is a really thick kind of like gel 
like toner. So a little bit thicker, but it is still very hydrating and very well accepted on the skin. The reason I like this one is we've got ceramides in here. Now ceramides are really considered the building blocks of your moisture barrier, along with a couple other ingredients we're gonna highlight in just a little bit. Ceramides are an excellent ingredient to look for in all skincare, for all skin types, and all skin conditions, but ceramides are really going to help build back up your moisture barrier. Not only do we have that, but we also have niacinamide. Now you may know this as a brightening ingredient, but niacinamide is also an essential component of your moisture barrier. It is actually naturally produced and found in your moisture barrier. So your body is actually producing niacinamide right now. This is going to be a very restorative ingredient to add topically to your skin when you're restoring your moisture barrier. So niacinamide, ceramide, excellent ingredients. But on top of that, we've also got eight moisturizing factors, including quite a few fatty acids, another moisture barrier restorative ingredient. So this is just full of goodness. Now, another uh, toner that I want to kind of highlight that has similar properties is the Rovectin uh, Skin Essentials Activating Treatment Lotion. Now, this also contains ceramides, niacinamide, and a few fatty acids as well. So this is also an excellent choice if you are looking to heal your moisture barrier. Now, when it comes to the serum step, I really don't think that this is an essential part of a moisture barrier healing routine. I really think that, you know, the emphasis should definitely be placed on toners right now to really add in all that hydration. But if you absolutely need to have a serum step, then I would recommend checking out another Relvectin product, and that is the Aqua Activating Serum. Now, I really like this one because this has a lot of hydration, but it also contains niacinamide, and it also contains a lot of good um, starting a inclusive um, ingredients and that's going to be good because the next essential step to healing your moisture barrier after you add the hydration is to start sealing it in. So this could be a good functional choice for a moisture barrier healing routine. Okay, warning, I have another essential step for you guys and this is what I call a treatment step. Now the reason I call this a treatment step is because the products that I'm about to talk to you about are solely focused on healing your moisture barrier. These are no-brainers. We have to have something like this in our healing routine. So the one product that I would probably say if somebody said pick one product that healed your moisture barrier, how did you do it? I would say it was Stradia Liquid Gold. This is pure liquid gold. This is definitely the product that I would recommend. If I could only tell you one, I would tell you this one. And here's why. Number one, this product is solely focused on healing moisture barrier. Number two, it contains what I call the holy trinity of ingredients. Now, as I mentioned before, you definitely want to have ceramides in your routine because that's an essential building block to your moisture barrier. And you also want to have fatty acids in your uh, moisture barrier healing routine. These are very important. A third ingredient I want to throw in there is cholesterol. Now, these three ingredients, ceramides, fatty acids, and cholesterol, are proven to work really well together. They actually boost the results because the thing is, Ceramides are beautiful, do not get me wrong, but they cannot do it all on their own. They really do rely on other supporting ingredients to really boost the results. So these three are actually proven to really help repair them, not just support it or strengthen it, but to repair it, to rebuild it. But even then, even if you have all three of those ingredients, which if you find all three of those ingredients in another product, that's amazing. Like this is good. You know it's going to be beneficial for you. But I'm going to add another element onto that. Those three ingredients are even most effective in a certain ratio. And here's the thing about ingredients. There's no ratios on the ingredients list. It's really hard for us to know that, right? We're not, you know, we're not like beauty chemists. We can't just look at an ingredients list and know ratios, right? So the thing that I like about Stradia Liquid Gold is it has all three of those beautiful ingredients that you absolutely want for your moisture barrier healing routine, but it does have the correct ratio. This is called the golden ratio. And Stradia Liquid Gold has that. So this is really the highest quality product for healing your moisture barrier because the ingredients are there and the ratios are there. To top it off, we've also got a whole bunch of other moisture barrier loving ingredients. It's jam packed full of just goodness for your skin. So I cannot recommend this any anymore. This stuff is beautiful. 
Now I just want to highlight another product. This is pretty brand spanking new and I've only just recently started to use it, but I do want to highlight it as a barrier healing specific product, which even though a lot of products claim to have barrier benefits to them, they aren't necessarily focused on healing your barrier. There's a big difference there. So I do want to highlight one other product that is like solely made to heal your barrier. This is a pretty new one. This is from Crave. This is the Great Barrier Relief. Now this has a pretty similar ingredients list to straight A liquid gold with a couple of different exceptions here but generally speaking the ingredients list here is all about loving your moisture barrier and building it back up this is specifically recommended for people who have over exfoliated their skin and we know that over exfoliation really just means a damaged moisture barrier so I wanted to point this one out for you guys because this is also another great option for you Let's talk about facial oils. Now, facial oils are something that I leaned on pretty heavily during my damaged moisture barrier time. And I really feel like oils helped me not only to heal, but they also helped to keep my irritation in check. And honestly, from day to day, the biggest concern that I had was keeping my skin feeling calm and not irritated because that feeling was pretty terrible. And it would just bother me throughout the day. So I really find facial oils to be incredibly beneficial. Now, there is a whole world of facial oils out there so how do you figure out which one is right for you well the easiest way to break it down is going to be between the fatty acid profiles of different oils sounding a little complicated I know but just stick with me to keep it simplified you just want to think about two different types of fatty acids one is called linoleic acid and one is called oleic acid now linoleic acid is the one that we want to focus in on because lino linoleic acid is actually beneficial for healing your moisture barrier because it's going to really be able to dive deep into your skin and just kind of help repair the moisture barrier and the best way to find that out if an oil does have a high linoleic acid profile is just to pop it into Google, um, just put in like rose hip oil and fatty acid uh, profile, or you can even just put rose hip oil linoleic question mark. Now, the reason we don't want to focus too much on oleic acids because oleic acids are just purely moisturizing, not necessarily a bad thing, but we want to get more bang for our buck with our healing routine. So I think it's best to focus in on linoleic acid oils. Let me tell you about two of them that I actually really like. And the reason that I put these on my list over maybe some other ones that I have have tried is the fact that I got immediate relief from using these products. So personal experience is like mind blown, really great results from these. Number one, the Rovectin Skin Essentials Barrier Repair Multi Oil. This is a multi oil blend of all high high linoleic acid oils. This, I put this on my skin um, during my moisture barrier issues and my skin just felt completely relieved. It literally said like, ah, I heard that in my head when I put it on because my skin just felt better immediately. Now another oil that I just want to quickly point out to you guys is one that gave me immediate relief on my skin. Not only that, but it also helped to make my skin look better during my moisture barrier issues because my skin was looking almost um, thinner and hollowed out because I just didn't have any moisture that was being held into my skin. And this immediately plumped up my skin. And that is Lumine. This is the Nordic Sea Arctic Berry Cocktail. This is, how cool is this, right? This is dual phase. Um, so you shake this up and then you apply it to your skin. This is highly linoleic acid in here and it is um, a lot more moisturizing than the Rovectin. The Rovectin is kind of like a dry finish so if you um, aren't comfortable with like heavy oils on your skin go for the Rovectin. The Lumine a little bit heavier feel. It still absorbs in the skin really nicely but it is a little heavier feeling oil. Um, definitely good if you're in a very severely irritated state. Next up is a moisturizer. Now this is a very important step because you really want to start sealing in those layers and oils are definitely going to help you do that but moisturizers are really going to be the king here when it comes to creating that occlusive barrier that holds everything in place right and one that I have really really leaned on and I have to tell you moisturizers are hard to find the right ones because when you're constantly having moisture escaping from your skin a lot of moisturizers just don't fit the bill. They just don't live up to expectations. And you really need a hardworking moisturizer because again, we gotta lock everything in. We gotta keep that hydration back in place, right? So the real, really the only one that I can recommend like 
full heartedly is the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. It's not glamorous, it's not pretty, it's not Korean, but it just gets the job done. Now, as I said, ceramides, fatty acids, and cholesterol are really a real gold standard that we wanna look for when it comes to moisture barrier healing ingredients. And we've got all of that here in CeraVe, plus a bunch of other great barrier loving ingredients. So this is really good. This also has some great occlusive ingredients that really lock down your layers and really keep them in place. And that is definitely something we want to do when we're avoiding trans epidermal water loss. Now, sunscreen, yes, sunscreen. Now, I know you guys are already wearing sunscreen, aren't you? Aren't you? I know you are, because sunscreen is pretty freaking important, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna go over why you should be wearing sunscreen, but I do wanna touch on the fact that sunscreen is even more important when your, your barrier is damaged because the UV uh, light can actually penetrate your skin deeper and the UV damage is going to be accelerated. And the UV exposure can actually set your healing progress back. What? Yes, sunscreen, we have got to be using it no matter what. Here's the thing though. When your skin is vulnerable, when your skin is irritated, it is possible that sunscreen is going to make it feel more irritated. At least that was my case. I was actually starting to feel very uncomfortable wearing sunscreen because it just kind of was irritating my very, very fragile skin. So something that I want to point out to you guys is the difference between chemical sunscreens and mineral sunscreens. Now, I just have to cop up to the fact that I mostly wear chemical sunscreens, but mineral sunscreens are proven to be less irritating on the skin. They are 100% recommended for sensitive skin. And that is kind of how we want to treat our skin right now is being sensitive. So I want to point out to you guys a really cosmetically elegant mineral sunscreen, and that is Make Preem. Make Preem makes some pretty good um, products for sensitive skin. Make Preem UV Defense Me Blue Ray Sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen. It um, has a really clean ingredients list, and this isn't going to be as irritating as some chemical sunscreens will be. And finally, it's very optional to use a sleeping pack at night, but I do find this to be very handy in the fight against trans epidermis dermal water loss. Now, if you aren't sleeping with a humidifier at night, I'd really recommend that you guys look into getting a humidifier to sleep with at night because you spend so much time in your room sleeping and that is really when a lot of your water loss is going to occur. So you want to make your environment as humid as possible. So sleeping with a humidifier is an excellent choice, but it's also not a bad idea to slap on a sleeping pack a couple nights a week to really protect your skin as you sleep because really the goal here is to hold that moisture in as you heal, right? We we want to lessen the amount of damage that is being done. So one of the sleeping packs that I really like to just lock everything in is the Casarex Ultimate Moisturizing Honey Overnight Mask. Now the reason that I choose this one is because it's a very simple ingredients list and it's pretty clean. There's not a lot of irritants here. There's no essential oil, something we definitely need to be avoiding right now. And as I said, it just, it really just simply gets the job done of locking in your layers, hydrating your skin. We don't really want to focus Focus on brightening your skin. We definitely don't want any chemical exfoliation, any AHAs or anything like that in our sleeping packs. We just want to focus on hydrating, nourishing, and moisturizing the skin as the skin heals itself. We want to give it all the tools it can to succeed, and this would be a great option for you guys. So those are the products that I highly recommend if you are looking to heal your moisture barrier. And simply put, it's all about adding a lot of hydration into your skin, starting to lock it down with moisturizing layers and then finishing off with occlusives and you really do want to focus in your energy and attention on products like toners that are going to add a lot of water back into your skin and you definitely want to make sure that you have some type of barrier treatment in your routines and those products should really be including ingredients like ceramides cholesterol and fatty acids so let me know in the comment box below what's one product that you lean on when your skin is in distress whether it be from acne breakouts, dark marks, or a damaged moisture barrier, let me know in the comment box below your ride or die product. For me, it's definitely Stradia Liquid Gold. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I release two new skincare videos every single week, and if you ring the bell, you'll never miss the next time I upload the new video. I hope you guys are having a really beautiful day. I absolutely cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye.